Sorry about that, I was on mute. I wasn't going to come back on. But there has been a I've seen a few updates today, this evening on Elijah. But there's still something odd about this. Right? So we'll go into it in a minute. Let me stop that. Right, we're going to go into it in a minute. Uh, first of all, Elijah apparently went, was reported missing at 10.59 Tuesday morning. He was last seen at 8am by the care, caretaker, as they put it. Who the caretaker is, I do not know. I've not found out. Um, the mother... And her boyfriend were arrested, arrested, was it Tuesday night, Wednesday night, one of the two, or Wednesday morning, one of those two. Right, and um, but it, it's just growing complicated. Uh, it's like, you think you're going to get somewhere, but then someone throws a curveball at you. And it smacks you straight in the flippy face. Anyway, so I've been watching some YouTubers today, and they've been saying, right, this is just hearsay, not definite. Right, the last sighting, visible sighting of this little boy, was the 16th at some garage or something down the road or somewhere on the 16th now that's four days four days before he was reported missing no one had seen him be since between the 16th and the last saw him then until 8 a.m tuesday morning but then they didn't report him missing for only about three hours and I keep saying this, I said in my last live, if you've got a child of three, how does it end up outside? And I've heard, also heard that um, one, someone said that the grandmother or whoever lived there had locks on the door. The doors were always locked, right? So they had to unlock the locks to open the door. Now, I know three-year-olds are, three are very clever, but I've got a very simple lock on my front door, very simple lock. But my granddaughter, who's three, she wouldn't know how to open it. But my grandson who's six, he does. So because of that, I have to put the chain on. Right? I have to put the chain on the door. To stop him from unlocking the door and opening it. He wouldn't normally, he wouldn't do it anyway, but it's just that precaution is there. So for a three-year-old, pardon me, pardon me. Uh, for a three-year-old to unlock doors, and then get out and go outside. Stomach's not right. Right? And then they arrest the mother and the boyfriend. And they're not saying, giving us any details on why they were arrested. Nothing. So, did the mother have custody of the little boy? Did she leave him with someone while she was doing whatever? That's something else. I don't know the um, I don't know the family orientation thing. I don't know who's got custody of the child. The father, he's in prison, so he's out the picture. But the mother, 
apparently doesn't live in two rivers i'm not sure because they said there's no immediate family in that vicinity so i don't know it's right so uh, i'm watching another youtube channel i've got it on silence and it's on the tv and someone just threw up something saying apparently there must, there must have been a 15 year old living with the, mo the mother and the boyfriend and they said has anyone questioned the 15 year old there's something about the mother and the boyfriend situation it's not adding up the whole disappearance thing is not adding up. Do you see what I mean? Because who on earth would not realise a three-year-old? Would not miss a three-year-old? A three-year-old, unless they're sleeping, don't give you any peace at all. They don't. I know that person because I've got a three-year-old three granddaughter. So I know they don't give me any peace. My six-year-old don't. So I know as soon as they go quiet, I'm going, okay, what are they doing? And I'm in that room. And nine times out of ten, it's just lying under his covers watching his tablet. Or she's just sitting there building something. And that's why they've gone quiet. But it's not very often. However, uh, apparently they're still waiting on a press conference. But knowing my look, it'll probably come when I'm in bed again. So, I, it's just something is not right. You know when you get that intuition, that feeling, when summer isn't right, the information you've been told it isn't clicking. It's not clicking into place. There's bits missing. No, they don't know anything. They've got no description on anyone. They've got no description of a car. They've got nothing. So I'm just I'm going, I'm just gonna try check something out. Um oh. Oh God, keep hitting the wrong button. A B C you start with that. Let's have a look. See what they're saying. Right. <sighs> mm. I don't know, they're not, they're not giving anything on IBC News. Oh, let's see what I've got here. Have I got anything? No. No. No, no. This is what I mean. It's, it's really hard to find any more updates. You know what I mean? And how can you find a child when the people who were looking after him don't even know how he got out of the house. That's what the oh, uh, and apparently there was a, a pump, like a slip on pump. Some people might call him like a slipper because it just slips off. That was found, and there's rumor that his blanket was found as well. So, 
But the police aren't letting anything go. They're not telling us nothing. They're just telling us, like on that report they did yesterday, about the search that's going on, where they're looking and things like that. They're not, they're not even talking about the parents. It doesn't make sense. And if someone can make sense of that, please. Right? Come and say something. Come on YouTube and let me know in the comments. Because at the moment, I've got the two people, two of you on uh, Twitter, X, as I should say, watching. And I'll get a lot more watching afterwards. So anyone on replay, if you know anything about this case, about what they, if anything's been found, anything about the mother, the boyfriend, where they were living, who had custody of little Elijah? Not me. And I'm not joking, I've seen searches today on a video a youtube on a, like a, an update thing and the woods they was walking through they were struggling to get through and it's true a three-year-old can get quite a distance right you take your eyes off them for five two minutes they're gone two minutes even a minute they're gone you look at a person some a price of some on the shelf, they are gone. And it's, it's scary. It is coming to the point where you want to tag your child, get one of those geo tag things that you put on a bag or you can put on in, onto their coat or something like that. Because life is scary now. And I know that's in the USA. But it's just as bad in the UK. And it is scary. I'd hate to be a mother to die bringing up little ones. I really would. Because it's just too scary. So. Anyway. ABC News is not doing anything. Uh, let's have a look, see what they're saying. No, no, let's go to home. No, so I'm trying to find stuff on this little boy, and there's nothing out there. There's more people now on YouTube I've noticed talking about there's another YouTuber now talking about Elijah which is brilliant absolutely brilliant getting his name out there talking about him and as one does as you get one or two then another two will and so on and very soon now that the um, this case with Adam Montgomery has finished and they found him guilty Thank you. There is a lord out there. Hopefully they'll start turning their attention to this little boy. But I was reading an article earlier on here. On here. And I had to go and check the date this little boy went missing. Because in this article, it was saying he'd been missing nine or ten days. I'm going, well that's like last Tuesday then. So I went and had a look, and it said the 20th, which was Tuesday. Not a week ago. So that's, in my eyes, if I find that, again, I'm going to, I'm going to put a comment and say, this is false news. You're telling us it disappeared over a week ago. But here it's telling us it was reported missing on the 20th. But the last time I've seen him was the 16th. Physically saw him. Anyone saw him. 
because they've only got the word of whoever was looking after him that they saw him at eight o'clock that morning. You know what I mean? We've only got the word of them. And we, I don't even know who they were. They don't, their names are not out there. I can't find nothing. Right? So let's have another look. Let's see. Let's see what we've got here. Right. We've got the news. That was six hours ago. That was today. Right, so we're going to go to this, okay? We'll go to this news stream. So that will be today, okay? Uh, let me link you up. What do we take that off? Present screen, share screen. Wow, right. let's check it sharing. Yes, right. I'm going to start this and we'll listen to this. It's about um, two minutes, two and a half minutes long. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. In a briefing tonight, we heard from the Two Rivers Police Department about the ongoing search efforts for three-year-old Elijah Vu. He remains missing. He was last seen by a caregiver on Michigan Road about 8 o'clock yesterday morning. An Amber Alert was then issued Tuesday afternoon. Police say Elijah Vu is three feet tall, weighs 45 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes. Oh, this is the same one I heard earlier. He was last seen wearing gray pants, red and green dinosaur slippers, possibly might have a red and white blanket with him. He also has a birthmark on his left knee. We begin our team coverage with Jason Zimmerman, who just received an update from police. He's live now with Two Rivers with more on that. Jason. Bill, this was a very quick news conference at Two Rivers City Hall, lasting roughly about seven minutes. While police did not answer any questions, they did confirm that the search for Elijah is active and ongoing. Well, police spent much of the day at this apartment complex on Mishicot Road, retrieving potential evidence in the area. Three-year-old Elijah Boo was last seen. They also went on camera for the first time Wednesday night, assuring the public they haven't given up hope. Our search and rescue teams have been combing through our neighborhoods, parks, wooded areas, and they've been following up on all leads and tips from the public. The city's police chief would not comment on specific details concerning the search effort. He did thank the hundreds of volunteers who've come forward to help, including many from outside the community. I want to take a moment to express our deepest gratitude to everyone who has volunteered their time, resources, and support to assist in the search for Elijah. Your unwavering commitment to the well-being of Elijah and our community is inspiring. Also Wednesday, we heard from Elijah's uncle, Orson Boo, who told us the family is doing everything possible to pull together. We're extremely worried. We're, we're all emotional at the point, um, at the moment, and we, we don't want to think about the bad stuff that may possibly have happened to him, um, and we're, we're hopeful. For now, police say the search effort will continue. As we continue our efforts, I want to emphasize the importance of remaining vigilant and proactive. Additionally, I want to remind everyone to please refrain from spreading rumors and false information. Thank you. I've just said there's a news release somewhere on the internet saying he's been missing eight to nine, nine to ten days. That is false information. This can hinder our search efforts for Elijah. And People are starting to hand out flyers as well. This is one that I received from a volunteer tonight with Elijah's picture on it, his information and numbers to contact police if you do have any information you would like to pass along. Reporting live in Two Rivers, Jason Zimmerman, Action 2 News. Oh. So I'm just trying to get see if I can find a picture. Yes. 
โอ้โอ้โอ้ Now this is interesting. I will show it you. Uh, have a look. Wow. You can't. Yes, it's there. Now let's see what it says. Mother, mother of missing two rivers boy held on suspicion of child neglect. That's the mother. I think that's her boyfriend. Young, young. Katrina Ball left and Jess, Jesse rang there. Manitowoc County, Katrina Bora, identified by relatives as the mother of Elijah Vu, a boy missing from two rivers called, from two rivers, could be called as soon as Friday and requested charges of being party to child neglect. Hmm. WL UK that's TV has been following the case. Have they? I haven't seen them. Right, I'll just write that down so we can WL UK that's TV. We can check them out afterwards. Has been following the case. The station reports Jesse Fang, whose address is in court records, matches where the boy was last seen. Oh. So, that address where I was showing you last night and this morning, well, this afternoon, that's where he used to live. is expected in court on a requested charge of child neglect. No formal charges have, charges have been filed. Typically, Manitowoc County holds a bond hearing and then files criminal charges before an initial appearance. A court appearance should... A court appearance scheduled for Thursday, today, was cancelled less than two hours before it was supposed to start. Through three was reported missing Tuesday. He is the subject of an amber alert. Lucky, come on. That boy. Does he deserve them parents? Does he deserve these parents, this mother? No. No. Right? The boy is described as having sandy brown hair and brown eyes. He's about three feet tall, weighs about 45 pounds, and has a birthmark on his left knee. I know I said all this yesterday, and I've said it all this afternoon, but I'm going to keep repeating it until something comes out. Because you never know, someone might watch this later. I think, oh, oh yeah, you know what I mean? It was last seen wearing grey sweatpants, a long sleeve dark coloured shirt, and red and green dinosaur slipper on shoes. Now, I don't know if you're seeing in that clip, and I'll go back to that clip. You're seeing him picking up a little pump. We'll go back to there. We may be carrying a red and white plaid blanket seen in one of the photos released by police. Authorities have asked neighbours to check out buildings, vehicles or other concealed areas on their property. Those with doorbell cameras are also asked to check to see if Vu shows up on the video. However, police are requesting people not to use their own drones to serve as they could interfere with law enforcement drones. Hmm. Okay. I don't see how that could be, because if you're in one area and the police are in another area with their drones, how's it going to interfere? 
I don't know what to say. Community members have been pulling together in their own searches for the boy. The search party was held Wednesday morning and a prayer vigil was held Wednesday night at St. Peter's of Fisherman's Catholic Parish. Anyone regarding whose whereabouts is asked to call 920-686-7200. Please, if anyone knows anything, sees anything, don't go posting on YouTube, don't go posting on Facebook. Let the police know. You know what I mean? Don't go for your five minutes of fame because it doesn't help the case. Let the police know. Then don't get posting it on Facebook or wherever afterwards because that is something the police can have as evidence. You know what I mean? Even though people are juggling to get more information, don't do it. Unless the police say, yeah, that's okay, you can post it on Facebook or whatever. Right? Well, that was that. So that's why they've arrested them too, on suspicion of child neglect. So did she have custody of her son then? And was she at his place when they went missing? And perhaps they didn't have the locks on the door, like they say. And the little boy just, and now he's in a D-R-U-G-S-S -S, stupor that they didn't know the little boy had got out. Look on. If they've hurt that little boy, God help them. God help them. Right. Let's go back. Right. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. No. No. Right. What was that channel they said? W by TV. All right, let's have a look. W. TV. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what they've got to say. Being as they're following this story, so I should have something there. Is this what we just read? I don't know. Hold on, I've got to turn this off. Um. Well, we know. <laughs> <laughs> it says here, Action 2 News has learned law enforcement is recommending a child abuse charge against a second person in court. Well, we know who that is. We are not identifying him because we have not have we have not confirmed a connection. We do know he was arrested at 11.28 Tuesday night, 12 and a half hours after Elijah. Elijah. 
Right. Elijah was reported missing and Elijah's mother was arrested four hours after that. At 3 48 in the morning on Wednesday. Of course. Oh. So we know who they were, her boyfriend and her. Boy has not been officially charged. The formal charge is up to the district attorney's office. Mm. The scheduled court appearance is cancelled and their court information was sealed. Why is the court information sealed there? I don't. Right, let's have a look. Oh, so here we go again. Ah. <sighs> oh, we'll go back. Look, I'm going to go back. What? You can make an advert. Come on, I'm going to oh, If we first meet and you have an advert up, I'm going to ski. Right. I can't believe that. Uh, let's see what else I've got.
Vu, thanks for joining us. Brittany will be joining us shortly. Three-year-old Elijah Vu of Two Rivers is still missing. He is the center of an Amber Alert issue on Tuesday. Here is a photo of the little boy. He's three feet tall, weighs 45 pounds, has brown hair and brown eyes. He was last seen Tuesday morning wearing gray pants, red and green dinosaur slippers, and possibly carrying a red and white blanket. He also has a birthmark on his left knee. Brittany Schmidt is live in downtown Two Rivers with details, new details about the search and the boy's mother who is in custody. Brittany. Jeff, we were expecting to get a bit more information this afternoon about the ongoing investigation when the boy's mother was supposed to appear in court, but that is delayed, we're told, until tomorrow afternoon. Now those documents have been sealed, so no new information is being released right now. But here's what we were able to confirm this morning before that happened. Through the Manitowoc County Clerk's Office, we learned Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, has been released custody, since, custody since, since about 4 a.m. yesterday morning. We know she is facing a possible charge of party to a crime of child neglect. Bauer was supposed to appear alongside another man. We are not naming him at this time, but we have information that ties him to this case. He is also facing a charge of child neglect. He has been in custody with police since the night of the boy's disappearance. No one has been officially charged as the investigation continues. At this time, police have not named any suspects, but the search continues. We stopped at a quick trip and saw this poster up, this sign in downtown thanking those who are working to bring him home, many in the community doing their part to try to find Elijah. I think it's awesome that a small community will come together for this cause. And the fact that, you know, nobody really knows who this little boy is, but we're all here for him. I touched base with the FBI late this afternoon. I'm told the Two Rivers Police Department is still taking point on the investigation. They have not released any new details at this time, but the FBI is here helping local and state officials. I'm told they are providing resources. When I ask them what type of resources they are providing at this time, they say that is confidential. Reporting live in Two Rivers, Brittany Schmidt, Action 2 News. Hmm. So why, God, my man, come on, man, just go up there. Well, ah, that one's, yeah. So why have they sealed all information on the mother? Why are they not, why is that not to the public and not a child? She's an adult. So why why have they sealed the information? Not me. Let me see what this one says. It's just my I don't know if it should be there. Uh, look at it. Right. Right. Mm. And that's interesting, not. Right, so um, the mother, the boyfriend was arrested first on Tuesday evening. And she was arrested about four or so hours later. Right. And.
So I'm trying to find anything on this little board. And there's literally nothing on YouTube. Six hours ago, there was this one by WM. Right. I'm going to share this one with you. I'll get back up there. Share screen. Right. This is by W by TV Dot Two. I'm not sure if you've seen this. Walking, driving, everybody in town, I think, was out. The Two Rivers community comes together to search for missing three year old old Elijah Vu. I have a three-year-old boy also and two other kids so I don't know, what somebody do for me in the situation and I don't know it's just tough. As investigators collect clues the hope is to find something anything to end two days of turmoil. He him alive obviously would be the best but some kind of a a clue that makes everybody know where to go or what the next step is. Team coverage of the search for Elijah Top Action 2 News at 5. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. The community of Two Rivers remains on the lookout for three-year-old Elijah Vu, who was reported missing yesterday. Elijah is the child behind yesterday's Amber Alert, which is still ongoing. The case is being labeled an abduction. Elijah last seen on Michicot Road in Two Rivers yesterday morning at 8 a.m. Police say he is three feet tall, weighs 45 pounds, last seen wearing gray pants, red and green dinosaur slippers, possibly had a red and white blanket with him. He also has a birthmark on his left knee. We begin our team coverage with Jason Zimmerman, who spoke to members of the family a short time ago. He's live in Two Rivers with more. Jason. Bill, family member statement showing up at the scene, which is right behind me, this apartment complex that we believe might be the last place Elijah was seen before he went missing yesterday. Also today, family members tell me, telling me they are extremely worried at this point. In speaking with Elijah's uncle, Orson uh, Vu, he's not sure what led to this incident or who was even the last person to see Elijah before his disappearance. Vu is thankful that many people are helping with the search for his nephew. This includes neighbors and volunteers who have driven to two rivers from surrounding communities. Obviously, the family right now can only hope for the best, asking people who might have information to come forward to police. Uh, we haven't found out anything new. Um, it's the same thing as last night, I think. No, because the police are keeping it very close to the chest. They are not telling us anything. They're not telling the family anything. And they're not going to tell us anything. From the from what the detective told us this morning, they're, they're basically doing the searches all over again. Um, and at this point, like more family members that are here and we're kind of just trying to support each other, asking the community to see if they have any information. We also spoke to some of the neighbors who have been assisting in this search that live right around this apartment complex. I can also tell you that police have been out here for much of the day and that there was some evidence that was gathered here as well. We are hoping to hear from police at some point tonight. Reporting live. I'm into right, so which one are we? This one is in. Yeah. So let's think. Apparently, he was seen at eight a.m. Tuesday morning but wasn't reported missing until 11.50, uh, 10 59, just before 11 a.m. That's three hours. But rumor has it that last time anyone actually saw him 
was the 16th, which was four days before he was reported missing. Right, I don't know how true that is. I'm going to have to check up on that. Um, but even so, we have, I can't get over the fact, I can't get that. My head is still stuck at that house, those apartments. I think something happened to that little boy because when they stated that the address of the boyfriend on his police record was one of those apartments from where he went missing. Hmm. So was the mother there with Elijah and went up to his apartment, D-R-U-G-S were involved, something happened, they've had to get clean up and move the boy, something, or did they fall asleep in a D-R-U-G-S stupor and not lock the door and did the three-year-old get out on his own? But then right it's got to get out the block door as well not just the flat door there's a door to the the apartment it's got to get out that door and a three-year-old i don't know but he's managed to get out those two doors i'll tell you now a three-year-old can walk distance however if they found one of those little pumps of his, right, by a tree just by the side of that block, means it's going barefoot. So he's not going to get very far barefoot, especially when if he's, is if he's heading through trees and bushes and things like that is not going to get far. Right? So, and they're urging anyone with door cams, car cameras, video cams. Eh? When the reporters took their scan on one of the videos I was watching, there's quite a lot of traffic going up and down that road. Now, nowadays, I don't know of a car or a driver that doesn't have their car camera. Some people even have two, one for the front and one for the back. Right? I don't know anyone, even my son has got one. I don't know if he's got it set up though yet. He had it set up in the first car we had. But I don't know if he's got it set up in this one. Anyway, he has one. And it's just for helps with your insurance, really. So that the, if there's an incident, it's filmed. Yeah. So then you can say, well, I've got it on camera. And it helps with the insurance purposes or anything like that. So surely, if that little boy was out on that main road, at 8 a.m. when he was last seen at 8 a.m. there. Was he out there on his own at 8 a.m.? Or was he with someone else at 8 a.m.? Surely there'd be drivers going past any time between 8 and 11. Right? Down them side roads, people living in these houses. They've got, not everyone has door cams. Right? And I've just realised why my uh, doorbell wasn't coming to my phone and it wasn't connected to my internet. I had a new internet supplier and I hadn't connected it to the new internet. Anyway, so there's people with doorbell, door camera bells. There's lights on junctions, there's cameras on junctions. There's garages and shops with cameras. There's 
There's cameras everywhere. You can't walk about nowadays without being caught on our camera. You know what I mean? I leave my flat. Right? I get in the lift. There's a camera. I come out my lift. There's a camera. I'll go outside my block. There's a camera. So there's three cameras straight away catching me. I walk down towards, say, the main road. There's cameras on the shops there. And on certain lampposts watching the traffic, right? And then you're walking around. So you're getting, you, they could track my movement from me getting in the lift to me going round to my local doctor's say, and back. But even so, they've got mobile phones. I take my mobile mobile phone with me everywhere in case my family needs to get in touch with me, touch with me or I need to get in touch with them. So my phone is like in my bag at all times. So wherever I go, it's pinging. So if you're not being caught on video camera, camera, your phone is going to tell you where the, where you've been. But a child doesn't have a phone on them. So they have to rely on cameras. Right? They have to rely on cameras. And I hope to God people are sending in their cameras if they've got any sighting of a little boy or someone talking to a little boy, or someone getting out of the car to talk to a little boy. Anything. There's got to be something. Good. Whoever was watching him that day wasn't looking, um, wasn't keeping an eye on him. So I, I'm a bit confused because it says he has no family in the area. So I'd love to know who is um, watching our caregiver is, his main caregiver. Is it the mother or is it another member of the family? And who was looking after that child that day, supposed to be looking after that child? That's not come out. I'm having to rely on other YouTubers because for some reason, because they're in the USA, they can get this information better than I can. And I'm struggling here to find any information on this little boy on who his primary care, caregiver was. <laughs> Why is at this apartment on this day? Um, all this lot. So, I hope to God we can find him and find him alive. But you know what? The amount of cases I've heard of young children going missing, and I, I've only been doing YouTube, what, for about three, four weeks now. And it, I haven't had one good, good... The only... What I ever heard of was a little girl who went missing while out camping with her, her parents. And the found her just as the 48, 48 hour mark was coming up. And she was alive. Thank the Lord. That's the only one I've ever heard of being found alive. There's probably others. But you see. I think the news people were slow on getting the information out. Right? Because we only heard about it on YouTube. Uh, when was he? Wednesday morning? Yeah, was it yesterday I first heard about it? Yes. Or was it like Tuesday night, something like that, we first heard about it? Something like that. So, and YouTube, on YouTube, they normally hear very quickly about anything like Amber Alerts or children going missing, uh, 
you know what I mean? Anything to do with children, you, some, a lot of YouTubers hear about it very quickly. So it's, I don't know, it's just not, it's just something not adding up well. And I get shivers thinking about it. Because, what's this on? Right. Uh, uh. See, the police wouldn't even answer any questions. Um, Elijah, go in with him. Yeah, it's a search party map. This is the search party map they've got out. Right? They've got people down at Nashota Park. That's along the beach area, I suppose. They've got people at Is that spot? They've got people here around Monroe Street and Twenty Sixth Street. Um, no else. Right. Oh, right, these have been searched. These areas here yeah, have been searched. I'm not seeing that many searches. Search oh, right, so all these areas, right, have been searched. Let's just get mad. So all this here. Have been searched. Right. Oh, they've got another one up here. Why so far out? I don't know, but it has been searched. And they've got one out here in the ocean. What's wrong with that? Searched. Okay. What point is that? Okay, point A twenty one, where's point A twenty one? Okay. So that's has it been searched? I'm not sure, it's just got point, point 0.21, point 0.20, point 0.19, point 0. And then they've got point, 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 what number? So, point 0.21. So, I'm not sure if this means they've been searched or what, but I should imagine they have been. 
what led them out to that part, I do not know. And Polygon 2. What's Polygon 2? Hmm. Does that mean it's been searched? I know they were searched in the cemetery yesterday. Three academy, three perimeter and fill. Okay. So what's down there? Uh -huh. Just open landing trees. I'm sorry, but they're not even telling us if they've got any search blog uh, divers or anyone with the boats who could uh, probably do the rivers. You know what I mean? Because there's some rivers around. Right. Look, green bag. It's a bit of a distance, but if they took them in the car, it could be there. You know what I mean? The young girl I've just found today. She was like 20 minutes drive or something like that away from where she lived. It may look a distance on the map, but travel time, it doesn't. So. Oh, come on. And you've had searches around there. You need the boats. You need people in boats in here. In this, what's it called? Lake Michigan. Right, Lake Michigan. They need boats in there. I'm glad to find out that they've been searching. I don't think all these places have been searched though. No. Right, I keep forgetting to put this in. Right, here it is. Here's the search map they showed us. Our farms in Ontario, they tested country music. Oh, they really need to get the boats out to here. But her appetite but look how for close they are to the... the she feels like she's sort of on beat. She always is. It's incredible. No matter what song like she plays, Michigan. slow jams, she's slow. They are songs, very so close to like Sometimes Michigan. she gets overexcited. Her online fans call her a rocking horse. Her favorite band so far seems to be Slipknot. And then you got these two rivers, that one there. We had to cut the dirty lyrics. This one there. Seven year old Pretty isn't offended. Then you Her girl the plans to post there. weekly music reviews with ratings based on as well as the intensity or lack thereof. She feels like a cross between Bojack of cartoon fame and Mr. Ed. Hello. The you know, I mean, horse. I can't I don't understand why this is that Doug Jones. Probably sing or sell. Why won't you please let them take CNN. it over CNN. to certain places? New York. Away from the police, Jones. 
You know what I mean? Or they say the mother's love there. is like no other, yeah. and it often means doing what's best for your baby. What for one mother, that meant leaving her child in the loving arms yeah. of another, courtesy of a safe haven baby box in South St. Louis um, County, a firehouse. And the box was installed in Melville back in August. New tonight, First Lord Forest Caroline um, Hecker yeah. has a story of heartbreak and courage. Melville firefighters were out there. So Last week, when they were notified of a silent land. alarm tripped back at the firehouse when on Telegraph Road. That alarm triggered the by a newborn there. baby being placed in this safe haven baby box. For a mother it to choose a safe haven baby box, she's basically saying, I want what's best for my child and it's and not me. And that's heroic. Um, but it's not without pain. Firefighters say within 60 seconds, the baby was in their arms. Mere so I think hours the old, need to let she was taken to the hospital have... and is healthy. To that I mother, agree. I would like to say Go to certain that areas. we love okay, you can use your that baby you and care for that area. baby uh, the minute that we lay area. eyes on her and the minute that we you know opened mean? up that door. Safe Haven founder there, Monica yeah. Kelsey says almost all newborns and swimming in Safe Haven locations are only hours old Please. and rarely born and in a hospital. You know, these babies months. are, you know, basically they're going to go in a dumpster or in one of our boxes. And so we always want them to end up here. <laughs> The St. Louis Crisis Nursery also offers new mothers a variety of resources for both them Why? and their babies. Chief Program Officer Molly Brown says the Crisis Nursery offers a 24-7 hotline for parents in need of everything from support to diapers and formula. Giving birth is a really emotional time. Um, not having support is a really difficult mm. situation for families to be I in or for, for a young mom to be I in. Um, and the, not having, you know, a safe place to turn to be, um, again, oh, very difficult for that, for that you. mom. No matter the situation, both Kelsey and Brown say resources are available, but, often just a phone call away. In Melville, Caroline Hecker, First alert four. In Illinois, there is it a safe haven law, but anything. there are no baby boxes. You have to surrender the child face to face. Still no questions asked, though. You can surrender up to 30 days after birth to a hospital fire or police station. Really isn't. And I'm lost. I am. I don't know what else. You know what I mean? We've gone through everything I've got on YouTube. Been here for more than 20 years. What in the world Have is you got happening here? Why would you do this? 82-year-old Elm. Yeah, that's all I had on that. What's this? Well, oh, let's see what else you got to say. And now the document's been sealed. So very little information is being released. You know what I mean? Took her into police custody at 4 a.m. A fellow was arrested on the Tuesday night. And she was took in on, at 4 a.m. <sighs> Let's see. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. A search for a missing three-year-old. 
Elijah Vu last seen Tuesday morning, an Amber Alert issued that afternoon. In addition to Good law afternoon. enforcement and its investigation, members of the, the community the continue to look for this little boy. Here once again is this, this is photo. what we know right now. As we tall, first alerted 40, you earlier today, pounds, Elijah's brown mother, hair Katrina and brown Bauer, eyes, is in the Manitowoc County Jail with and third red and green charges dinosaur slippers. To a crime Could be carrying with him a red and white Community blanket. He also has a birthmark on his left knee. Of the areas knee. around where but Elijah was seen on Tuesday morning. And then there is a landfill near Kilburn, one of the three landfills. Tammy, the two of police department has not released trash. any new details to us at this time, on that but we were are expecting to learn a bit more information this afternoon when the boys Christ's sake, I can get rid of any of them then. I don't know what was going on. Uh, I'll have to try and get it back again. To be by TV too. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on. So annoying. I don't know what happened then. I'm sitting in, I clicked on one and two other stuff. And has not released any new details to us at this time, but we were expecting to learn a bit more information this afternoon when the boy's mother was supposed to be in court, but that didn't happen. Now we know she is facing a possible charge of a party to a crime of child neglect. Katrina Bauer was supposed to appear along with another person this afternoon to face a charge of. I can't get the sand back again. So we'll try it again. And before I start it, right, I'm going to share it. And then once I hit the go button, oh, I'm on my smash. Right, let's go down to this. Yeah, good thing now. No, I did not want to go away. Right, why am I not getting sand again? I give up. Good evening. The search for a missing three-year-old from Two Rivers reaches day three. Elijah Vu last seen Tuesday morning, and Amber Alert issued that afternoon. In addition to law enforcement and its investigation, members need to look for this little boy. 
Here, once again, is his photo. He's three feet tall, weighs 45 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. Last seen wearing gray pants and red and green dinosaur slippers. He could be carrying with him a red and white blanket. He also has a birthmark on his left knee. Brittany Schmidt is live in Two Rivers with details about the search and the boy's mother who is in custody. Brittany. Bill and Cami, the Two Rivers Police Department has not released any new details to us at this time, but we were expecting to learn a bit more information this afternoon when the boy's mother was supposed to be in court, but that didn't happen. Now we know she is facing a possible charge of a party to a crime of child neglect. Katrina Bauer was supposed to appear along with another person this afternoon who faces a referred charge of child neglect. We are not naming him at this time, but we have information that ties him to this case. He's been in police custody since the night of the boy's disappearance. No one has been officially charged, nor have police formally named any suspects. But the search for Elijah continues. We stopped at a quick trip and saw this poster up. This sign in downtown thanking those who are working to bring him home. Many in this community and from nearby areas are looking for Elijah and asking police to help point them in the right direction. Give us a heads up of where you think he could possibly be. If you don't think he's in Two Rivers anymore, tell us so that we can move our search to somewhere else. But they're not opening up to anything. They're not answering questions. Give us information of where what you're thinking. I get that they have to hold their hand on some things, but let us know. I touched base with the FBI this afternoon. The agency is aiding local and state officials by assisting with resources. I did try to ask what types of resources they are assisting with, but they said that they could not tell me at this time. It is confidential. Reporting live in Two Rivers, Brittany Schmidt, Action 2 News. Brittany, thanks. Once again, here's the picture of this missing child, three-year-old. Right, now, why are... Uh... The resources they are using confidential is it because they're not using any resources they put out an amber alert so if an amber alert goes out fbi is involved right and we've got Equisurge who have teams who could go out and help them because they help them on land and water. You know what I mean? And they know how to work these places, they know what to look for, what signs to look for when they're out in the woods. You know what I mean? So, why aren't they telling us the resources they're using? It doesn't make Sense. Right. Well, let's go back. Anything else? Ah. I think we've seen this one as well, haven't we? We'll go back up there. Thank you for being here this Thursday, getting right to that search for the missing three-year-old boy in Two Rivers. We have new coverage on the Amber Alert for Elijah Vu of Two Rivers. We have Emerson Lehman and Emily Roberts. Yeah, we've seen that. Right. So, the police are chasing them. And they don't give that information. Do you need to get a little bit of a bone here and a little bit of a bone there? Right? If the police go completely silent on a case and not give you any information, and the only update they give you is we are searching, we've got search parties out, but they won't even tell you the resources they are using. 
And then they sealed all the cases, like the case for the mother and the other guy, they sealed it. Right, so no information can get out at all. Makes you wonder why. And then people start coming up with their own hypotheses. Such as what I'm going to do now is say, I, in my opinion, in my opinion, because the police will not give us any information, I think the mother and her boyfriend are involved. And I think, in my opinion, that something happened to that little boy. And that is why they took so long to phone the police. Because at those apartments, oh, I'm not going to go, no, I'm not doing Google Maps, it's not, it's taking me too long to log in. Right, at those apartments, which I showed you yesterday and this afternoon, right, um, her boyfriend was registered as living there under his police, police record. So was he living there at the time, or was it someone else living there at the time? And that apartment where the little boy was supposed to have been, had a heavy concentration of police around it yesterday, Tuesday and yesterday morning. Now I think the one report said there's just one police car sitting there, just make sure people don't go to go to where they shouldn't be going. <coughs> 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 But they did find some items outside that flat, outside that complex, by a tree, or somewhere like that, just to the corner of that apartment. And from the video I saw, it was a little pump, and it looked like it was like had dinosaurs on. The sort of pump a child would wear. So... I think it's going to come out very soon that the pet, the mother had something to do with it. I really do. Because who the hell is this caretaker? They say was looking after him. Well, they didn't, do, they didn't do a very good job, did they? Because they didn't know he disappeared for three hours. Now, I knew straight away when I heard that li little boy had gone missing at 8am, but it hadn't got reported till 10, 59, 11 am. I knew straight away, I said to some... In my head, I was thinking, no, that's not right. You wouldn't... You couldn't not know where a three-year-old was for three hours. I was, like I said, unless they were sleeping. And then you know they was in their bed or their cot or where, wherever. But for three hours to not know where a three-year-old was. And the last time he was seen was at 8 a.m. So was he living there with the mother and her boyfriend? I don't know. Because we're not hearing nothing about that. We don't know if he was, if the boyfriend was living in them apartment, if she was living with the boyfriend. But all I know is it says he has no immediate family in that area. Right? 
Now that might be true, but the uncle must have lived in that area or near to that area. Other members of the family are coming into the area now. Oh, since the boy was first mentioned, Tuesday, so other members are now in the area. But on Tuesday, it said there's no immediate family in the area. And that's why I kept saying, well, where's the mother? Where's the father? Who's the primary caregiver of this child? We don't know nothing. Because the police have now sealed the document. Which means nothing is going to get out. Why have they sealed the document? It doesn't make sense. So, to be honest with you, I think, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, we are looking for a body. Right? Uh, and they had three hours, whoever, to get move this body, this little boy, and then come back, clean up the mess in the flat to where the little boy was standing, clean it all up, and then um, police. So I think this is a big con because. How am I going to get out of a flat that had locks on and then get out of the main door of the block? It doesn't make sense that he got out of those two doors. And then they are missing. And they didn't go for three hours. They didn't hear their full door opening. Oh my lord, I don't always hear my door opening, right, when my son comes. They try creeping on me. They do it a couple of times, scared the ass out of me. Right. And, but, I do, sometimes I have heard my door open. And I know it's my son coming in. So I hide because of my grandson. I'll hide somewhere. And you'll come ringing in. Like, Granny, big boy here, big boy. And then when he comes in, he goes, where's Granny? Where's Granny? And that's when I come out. But I hear my door opening. I'm, I'm partially deaf. And not only that, my ear door as well creaks. So as soon as that door opens, I hear something. Unless I'm in the kitchen or something, I may not hear it. But come on, you've got a three-year-old, you've got to get out of the door with locks and bolts or whatever. Right. You've got to get out of that door and then out the out of the locked door to get outside, outside. Please, someone make it make sense. Because I can't. Because there's so many unanswered questions. Right? One, who's the caretaker? Hmm. Who's the primary caregiver? The mother? Or another family member. That's the second question. Can't be the father. The father is in prison. Three. How did he get out of a blocked, blocked front door? Right? And then out of a, the block, the apartment store, the, the communal area, out of that door there. Right? Four. Why did you not, how did they not realise he was missing 
for three hours. Please, if anyone is watching this on replay, please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think, because this is doing my heading. I need, and the police aren't giving us nothing. So they want our help, but they won't give us no information. In fact, they've now gone and sealed all documents. So we're definitely not getting nothing off the police now. And if they're not telling the family anything, which I think they should be, and if I was family, I'd be demanding they tell me something. Tell me what is happening. This is my nephew gone missing. You know what I mean? From the younger, I'll be saying, tell me what's happening. This is my nephew we're looking for. That even the you know, people on the church say, if they just told us what they know, like where to look or where not to look, it would help a lot better. But the police aren't giving them nothing. All the police have said is don't use your own drones or search dogs because it could interfere with their drones and search dogs. Um, well, I I don't know that. There's a big mass of land. You could ask them to use their drones over that part of the land. Take their dogs over that part of the land. It's not going to interfere with your, your with what you're doing over there. Why are they turning help down by volunteers? This is not making sense and it's getting me madder and madder the more I hear about this. Right, let's see if there's any new updates. Oh no, still the same on there. I'm going to have another look on YouTube, see what they've got, if there's anything. So, I don't really know. Look at that. Nothing. Only what certain you a couple of YouTubers are putting up, and that is it. Nineteen hours ago. Let's have a look at this one. No, but there's nothing, and it's it's like they don't want information out there. Sure, it's my cat going on the box somewhere. Okay, why well, haven't I got sound again? Oh, it just annoy me, this is. My sound is up. Yeah, my sound's up. Why well, have got like sand down here? Sand is there. I have to go. I 
I still vote with the same because it's too much. You're telling me I need to go out of this, right? To go back into YouTube. I think YouTube are really messing about. We've seen that, we've seen that, we've seen that. But this was the one I wanted. And I'm wanting her while I don't have sound. Why have I got that? It's just my head thing, really good. No, I've got the wrong one now. Well, you've only got five logs because no one can flipping hear it. What? You know what I mean? I've got my signs up everything. And they can take a hold because I'm bagging up now. Hanging up, uh, struggling to find information, and then when I do find it, I get no sound. No, we've seen that one. No, but listen to this show. It's less, it's just under three minutes. This is. possibly might have a red and white blanket with him. He also has a birthmark on his left knee. We begin our team coverage with Jason Zimmerman, who just received an update from police. He's live with more on that. Jason. Jason. Bill, this was a very quick news conference at Two River City Hall, lasting roughly about seven minutes. While police did not answer any questions, they did confirm that the search for Elijah is active and ongoing. Well, police spent much of the day at this apartment complex on Mishicot Road, retrieving potential evidence in the area three-year-old Elijah Boo was last seen. They also went on camera for the first time Wednesday night, assuring the public they haven't given up hope. Our search and rescue teams have been combing through our neighborhoods, parks, wooded areas, and they've been following up on all leads and tips from the public. The city's police chief would not comment on specific details concerning the search effort. He did thank the hundreds of volunteers who've come forward to help, including many from outside the community. I want to take a moment to express our deepest gratitude to everyone who has volunteered their time, resources, and support to assist in the search for Elijah. Your unwavering commitment to the well-being of Elijah and our community is inspiring. Also Wednesday, we heard from Elijah's uncle, Orson Vu, who told us the family is doing everything possible to pull together. We're extremely worried. We're, we're all emotional at the point, um, at the moment, and we, we don't want to think about the bad. What? Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us here at 430. We begin with the latest in the search for missing three-year-old Elijah Vu of Two Rivers. This is what we know right now. As we first alerted you earlier today, Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, is in the Manitowoc County Jail referred on possible charges of party to a crime child neglect. Community groups are continuing their searches of the areas around where Elijah went missing on Tuesday morning. And then there is this scene at a landfill near Hilbert, one of the three landfills that Manitowoc County uses to dispose of trash. You can see multiple investigators 
on that site. They are combing through an area that is marked off by police tape. We also know the FBI is on that scene. What we don't know is if this scene is connected to the search for Elijah, only that it is the site of an active investigation. We have crews on that scene working to learn more. For more on what we do know about the mother being in custody and the ongoing search, let's join Brittany Schmidt live in Two Rivers. And Brittany, let's just start with what you know about the mom being in custody tonight. Right. So, Chris, we went right to the Mantua County Courthouse this morning, uh, right to the clerk's office, and they weren't able to give us a sheet of when she was supposed to be in court. But we were able to provide her name, a name of another person that is likely connected to this case. And then the clerk's office was able to tell us that they were supposed to be in court at 1245 today. But around 11, we learned that that was no longer the case. They delayed it until tomorrow afternoon. We do know that the mom Katrina Bauer has been in custody in police custody since yesterday morning around 348 in the morning. And I asked them what what is she being held on? And I was told that uh, a possible charge of party to a crime of child neglect. Now, the other individual that was supposed to appear as well, uh, we are not identifying him because we have not truly connected him to this case, but he is uh, going to appear alongside her. Um, he has been in custody since the night of the disappearance of Elijah Vu. Um, he is looking at a charge of a possible charge of child neglect as well. All right, Brittany, you mentioned there that they were originally scheduled to appear today at 1245. That's been pushed back. You've covered a lot of court cases. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things could lead to a postponement like this? You know, Chris, it's not unusual, but it was unexpected in this case because we had confirmed it this morning. Um, but you know, there are several things that that could lead to the delay. Um, did investigators need a little bit more information, more probable cause to hold them? Um, did they get more information and are trying to go through all of those avenues? Did one of them talk to police and tell them what may have happened or where Elijah is or that they have no idea where he is? All of this stuff. Um, so many reasons as to could there be potential other charges that they're looking at. So really, any everything is unconfirmed at this point. We won't know until police tell us. But as soon as we did learn that their court cases, their court appearances had been delayed, we went right to the clerk's office, asked them why. Um, I was told that the the it's been sealed. So I went to the district attorney's office and asked them why it's been delayed. They could not comment at the time just to say that they will likely appear tomorrow. All right, Brittany, we mentioned that the FBI was on the scene at that landfill in Hill, but we also know the FBI, and again, that scene we don't know is connected, but we know the FBI has been involved in the right. search for Elijah as well. What have you heard from them on this? Yeah, so I had contact with them around 2.30, 3 o'clock this afternoon, just asking what their role in this is, because we know when an Amber Alert comes down, the FBI is going to respond. They told me that Two Rivers Police Department is still taking lead on the investigation. The FBI is here to assist local and state agencies. They're assisting with resources. Uh, I tried to ask the FBI, you know, what kind of resources are they providing here? Uh, she was not able to give me that information. She said that's confidential at this time. So that's the extent of what I know that the FBI is here doing. All right, Brittany, thanks so much. And we still await an update if possible from Two Rivers Police, as Brittany said, the lead investigator unit on this story. We will continue to follow this story. We'll have team coverage, and we will first alert you of any developments both on air and on our app online. Action 2 News at 4.30 returns right after this. Ah, so that was a slightly new. It's like pulling teeth. Honest to God, it's that painful. It's Or should I say, it's like getting blood from a stone. Because they're not giving us anything. Nothing. Not while the mother was arrested for. Uh, while the boyfriend was arrested for. Uh, what about the 15-year-old that lived in the same property as them? Nothing. Did they live in that property? Or was it other people they knew lived there? What was the little boy doing at that property? There's so many questions. Because if I could, if they took questions off me, I'd be going bum, 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 bum. Question after question after question. 
because there's so many. And by them not telling us anything, it's making our minds work go over time and come up with these stupid hypotheses of what could have could have happened. But really we don't know because the police haven't told us nothing. All we know is at eleven AM yet Tuesday morning a report was made of a missing boy. Last seen at eight AM that morning. Right? And that is all we know. Oh, and what he's wearing. Besides, if that little shoe was his, then surely whoever looked at who the caretaker, whoever that person is, could say, yes, that's this, that's it, that's his shoe. You know what I mean? So then, why are they saying, not giving us the information out saying, yes, okay, um, on our search on Wednesday morning we come across this shoe, or on our search Tuesday afternoon we come across this shoe just by this tree here, by the corner of the block. And it had been ID'd and confirmed as Elijah's. Why? Can't they just give us little tidbits like that? Hmm? Why won't they tell us what resources they are using? How's that going to damage the case if we know if they're going to be using divers, uh, dogs, not me, for, and now if some dogs go for blood, some go for decomp decomposition. So, why don't they tell us they're using dogs? Oh no, they tell us, tell the residents not to use your own dogs and not to use your drones because it could interfere with the police dogs and police drones. There's a mass of area that needs covered. Come on, let people help you. There's organisations out there that have got drones that can pick up the Slightest bit of colour in between trees. You know what I mean? They've got drones that give out heat signals. Pick up on heat. They've got everything. Tell us what resources. And then we wouldn't be coming up. You won't start getting these stupid YouTubers coming out with these stupid stories. Which will happen. Christ, I read one yesterday about me being missing for eight, nine or ten days. How false is that? And that is going to just get worse because the police aren't giving anything out. Now, if they're searching that um, tip, right, that landfill, then perhaps they've had information of the mother. And that's what makes me believe this little boy is not is no longer with us because why would they be searching a landfill? You don't search landfills for children who are alive. So to say that you don't, you don't. And for the police, if the police have said, oh, well, that's got that search on the landfill, has nothing to do with this case, I'd go, BS. I'd literally shout it from the back of the ground, ground and I'd go, BS. How many missing people have you guys gone missing then in this area? where you're searching a landfill, where the FBI are, you know what I mean? You've arrested your boyfriend, you've arrested the mother, 
You're now searching the landfill where the FBI are, are, are as well. You know what I mean? So don't try and follow us up and say, I've got nothing to do with Elijah. Hmm. I'd literally scream over the top of the head to everyone. BS. Because you're only looking on landfill and you've only got police and FBI and whatever looking on landfill for a body, for a retrieval. For nothing else but that. That's why I'm trying to stay up as late as possible. So that if any news comes through, if they do an update. You know what I mean? Six, yeah. So, but I don't think I could start till three, four in the morning. When they probably two, three, four in the morning, they'll probably do their news update. But I can't do it. Oh my lord, I have been on here now just under two hours and I've literally shown you nothing because there's nothing to show you. But I want to keep putting it out there. So if anyone does watch this later on, they know what we're dealing with. You know what I mean? Share it. Get shared. Get shared out there so people see it. But now, um, we need to get this out because so much is not right. It's just got a funny smell to it. So, um, there's my TV. I'm going to see if I can find anything on my TV. If not, then I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to see if this is anything. No, I think we've seen this. Right now, the mother hasn't been is hasn't been charged. She's been with a referred charge of party to a crime of neglect. Um. I mean, it's, there's something not sitting right, there's a funny smell about this case, I mean. Just not sitting right, something's not right. As soon as I heard they waiting, it took them three hours to inform the police. I knew then something wasn't right. Uh, yeah, we've seen that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I'm going to call it a night because there's nothing new coming out at the moment. There'll probably be something new in the morning when I wake up. So if there is, I'll go and do a live. I don't really want to do a live in the morning. I might wait till the afternoon because I want to get to the shop and get a uh, get some uh, some tools to put my TV to try and have put my TV together on Friday, Saturday. So. Right, there's nothing new on there, so I will say, oh god, 
Thank you and good night. And I'll be back tomorrow because I'm doing an update on Audrey Cunningham. Okay? Because we have got a lot of news updates we can watch on them. Okay? So I'm watching one now. So anyway, so I'll, we'll talk about her tomorrow because there's a lot going on in her case as well. So for now, I say good night and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for future lives and videos. So I say good night. I'll play out with this song for, for a change. Thank you.